Hi folks, FPL General here recording a new episode of my 59th Minute FPL podcast, recording on Tuesday, November 26th. So we've got Champions League and Europa League this week, and then we've got Game Week 14, 15, 16 packed into, I think it's nine days. So three game weeks across nine days is going to be absolute carnage next week. So looking forward to that. Hopefully we can come out of it with a, with more green arrows and red arrows. Um, going in straight into the shoutouts this week, no 59th minute shoutouts, all players are safe from a mention this week, a couple of notable mentions, Chelsea's Emerson, 58 minute appearance, got himself a, a zero pointer there, Yarmolenko, West Ham, 55 minutes for a one pointer, so Yarmolenko's been a, been a big disappointment for owners over the last couple of weeks, as have, you know, West Ham have just been just been awful. And last week, Andre Gray got a 59th minute shout out. He followed that up this week with a 55 minute appearance. Got himself a yellow card as well for a, for a big, big fat zero. Game week 13, how was it for me? It was a good one. Uh, 66 points. Going into the, going, I, I talked on last week's podcast that the plan was, I think I said I was about 90% sure of doing Sterling to Manny last Tuesday. By the time Friday night arrived, my, my thinking completely changed, and I just got the feeling that, you know, Man City were going to score a couple of goals against Chelsea. I felt it wasn't the right time to get off Sterling, so I, I ended up just banking the transfer uh, with a view to doing that move this week instead. So, obviously, in hindsight, should have done the Sterling to Manny move last week. That VAR goal ruled out for Sterling was extremely frustrating as an owner, especially after Manny had got himself on the score sheet so but you know not complaining too much because it was a good game week overall Uh, 66 points took me from 283k overall up to 231k so moving in the right direction I think that's two green arrows in a row now mainly thanks to Jamie Vardy I've owned him for two weeks I've captained him for two weeks and he's got me 48 points over the over those last two games so um, I'll talk about captaincy later in the podcast but you know, after he's served me well last two weeks, I'm probably just going to leave the armband on him. I think that might be the key to success this season is just to, just to back Jamie Vardy every week. The the other positives, uh, Jimenez on the score sheet again, so he's been great. Uh, had him two weeks now as well, so so two goals there, doing exactly what I hoped for when I brought him in. De Bruyne got a goal, albeit a little bit fortunate. Good to get those seven points. Robertson continues to be one of my players of the season, despite not getting too many clean sheets. Got himself six points with the assist and the bonus point. And Nick Pope. Nick Pope has just, you know, just when I was getting a little bit impatient with him, he pulls out two nine pointers, you know, back to back, just to just to get back on my good side. Uh, I've got a question about Nick Pope later, so I'll come back to him. Um so yeah, he's he's been he's been the legend the last two game weeks. So that was the positives. Uh, negatives, you know, which players didn't do well for me. Uh, obviously, Mount and Abraham didn't do much, but probably didn't expect too much against Man City anyway. Telemans was quiet again, but I don't mind that too much as long as Madison stays quiet as well. So I was pretty happy to see, pretty fortunate as, as a Vardy captainer, you know, Madison's goal getting ruled out and, and Vardy getting to retake it. So that was a that was a nice slug. Nice slice of luck. Good to be on the, the the right side of that rather than the wrong side. And that seems to be the story of my season. This year, I seem to be coming out on the right side of most things this season, most 50-50s, which makes a big change from last season. So long may that continue. Trent, disappointing again. Just two points. Uh, it's absolutely crazy. Liverpool, you know, clean sheets this season. I was just looking at it today. They've played 13 games. They've only conceded 11 goals. But they've only got two clean sheets. It just it just baffles me. Every single game they've conceded, it's only been one goal. You know they haven't conceded more than one goal in any game this season. So defending well, but just conceding that one goal every week, which is very very frustrating when you've got what is it about fourteen million invested in, in two of their defenders. So again, um, they're going nowhere for me. Next four games, great fixtures for Liverpool. So I'm hopeful that those two guys will hopefully bring in more points over the next couple of weeks. Lundstrom, it all looked so good. Got the assist to begin with. You know, he was getting a couple of shots away, uh, but then conceded three goals and got himself a yellow card as well. So ended up on just three points. Could have been so much better, 
But again, I think Lundstrom showed us again in that Manchester United game. You just don't bench him. You know, I think a lot of people will have benching decisions to make going into this weekend in terms of Lundstrom, Soyuncu, Tomori, all these guys. I think you just start Lundstrom. You know, you you don't look at him as a defender anymore. He's an attacking midfielder. If he gets a clean sheet, it's a bonus. It's probably more likely that he's going to get attacking returns these days than it is uh, clean sheets. So, yeah, don't bench Lundstrom is, is my advice there. Left Cantwell on the bench, but I mean, I was always going to do that. I think he was he was my third sub. Uh, I think I had Rico and Tomori ahead of him on the bench. So it was, obviously, it's never nice to see your, your bench players scoring. But, you know, he, he was never going to start for me at the weekend anyway. So uh, I think he picked up an injury. Uh, I need to have another look at that. I, I think I've seen a few tweets from Ben Dennery that he might have been wearing a protective boot after that game. So uh, hopefully it's not too serious because, I mean, if, if, he, can, if, he, can, if he is... If he is fit again soon, you know he, he could become a good a good bench option again, Cantwell. So rather than having to waste a transfer to get rid of him, so hopefully hopefully that injury is not too serious. So that was my game week thirteen. As I said, a good one. So hopefully I can carry that momentum now and just keep going, keep moving in the right direction over the next couple of weeks. Hopefully smash the next four game weeks. Uh, then navigate the blank game week 18 with the wild card so i think i think i'm probably set on on wild card game week 20 i think that's my most likely most likely play moving on now to the watch list i've updated it this morning having watched match of the day and a couple of other highlights as well um so five players have added to the watch list this week i think most of them are differentials this week i think all of them are under 10 percent owned so some interesting options here for us to consider for the next uh, you know busy busy run of games coming up going to mention a couple of stats here as well the stats that i mention are all from fantasy football hub first player lucas mora so spurs were much better in Mourinho's first game than they have been in recent weeks the big caveat here is they were playing against a truly atrocious West Ham side. So I'm not getting over excited by Spurs assets just yet until I see them against Bournemouth this weekend. I think that will be a bigger test for Mourinho and his troops. Uh, Lucas Mora, it was good to see him get the start in that game, got himself on the score sheet. What I like about Lucas Mora is his price. He's only 7 million. Uh, very, very attractive price there. He was top for big chances. Uh, for midfielders at the weekend with three I think Jamie Vardy was the only player who had more big chances at the weekend I think Jamie Vardy had five Uh, Mourinho is a big fan of Lucas Moura I think that's another plus in his favour I think there was some quotes that Mourinho said he tried to sign Lucas Moura a couple of times uh, when he was at different clubs so I I like the sound of that as well Uh, I think he hopefully he will be a regular starter on that right hand side of the Spurs attack Uh, I mean if he plays we know he's a, he's, a, he's a very good player, so he will get the returns. So again, it might be a little bit early, but again, I think sometimes you can miss out in points by by you know not acting on your gut early. And I've got a good feeling about Lucas Moore, and I'm, a, I'm actually considering him this week. Um, so I'll come back to him when I, when I talk about my potential transfers, because I've got two frees. There's a couple of different routes I could go. But yeah, Lucas Moura, um First, first player added to the watch list this week. I'll come back to Spurs players as well because I think there's there's a question about them. I know a lot of people are considering Spurs now. Mora is just 3.9% owned as well, so he's a, he's a nice differential for the next couple of weeks. Another differential I'm considering, uh, I've said a few times this season, I, I, I probably wouldn't get this guy because I don't like his attitude on the pitch, but I didn't realise just how good Crystal Palace's fixtures were for the next, I think it's the next eight game weeks. They've got really, really good fixtures, as good as anyone. Uh, Wilfred Zaha scored his first goal of the season uh, in game week 13, 6.6 million. You know, he is out of position. You know, he's he's, he's basically a forward and he's, he's a midfielder in FPL. Um, as I said, amazing fixtures, five shots in the box against Liverpool, so really good numbers there in that game as well. Um, and you know, I, I was surprised as well. You know, watching him this season, he, he's an angry guy, you know, and I, and I would have guessed he was probably on about four yellow cards, but he's actually only got two this season. Um, so again, that that makes me feel a little bit better about him. Um, and I'm, I'm, I, do you know what? I am warming to him. You know, I've, I've went the first couple of weeks of the season saying there's no chance I'm going to go near this guy, but it's it's the fixtures that are swaying me. I think they're they're just too hard to ignore, those next eight fixtures. And the thing I like about Zaha 
compared to a lot of players going into this busy period is he's very unlikely to get rotated you know you know the player I would replace him with you know four would be Mount you know Mount is a bit of a headache now I don't I hate having to worry every week is he going to play is he not going to play if he does play is he going to play 60 70 minutes whereas if I could get rid of Mount and get someone like Zaha I know I'm going to get 90 minutes every week during during the next couple of games so that is attractive to me Uh, and again it's those are two players I'm probably considering this week. Uh, if I decide to sell Mount, I think Lucas, Mora and Zaha are probably top of my list of possible replacements there. People people might ask, why don't you do Mount to Pulisic? But as good as Pulisic has been, I'm just not as hot on him as you know most people are. Again, it's just rotation worries. You know, it doesn't matter how good he's been. Yeah, he's a young player. Lampard's got so many options. You know, Mount was on the bench last weekend. Hudson Hudson Adoy you know, can come back in as well. So I, I'm sure at some point we're going to see Pulisic get a, get a rest during during the busy period. You know, especially these Champions League teams. Chelsea play, you know, this week and then they've got three, you know, it's basically four games in about two weeks. Um, so, you know, the Champions League teams and Europa League teams, they're, they're the teams we're, we're probably going to see the most rotation. So that's where the likes of Leicester, you know, the, the, your Vardy's, your Madison's, your Tielemans, and then your Zaha's, these kind of players. That's, that's why I like them at this time of year because... You can you can rely on them to play, and you know when it comes to FPL, the first thing you want is to see your player's name on the team sheet. And I'm just worried about Mount now. Another option in a similar price bracket, Iosi Perez um, had him at the start of the season, as a lot of people did. Uh, his price has dropped to six point two. Got on, got himself on the score sheet. Uh, I didn't watch the Leicester game, but I did catch the highlights this morning and. Perez was was he caught the eye in that game uh, in the short short highlight reel that I seen. Uh, he did only play sixty nine minutes, which is often the case. You know, Perez does very often come off early, but you know if he can get if he can get the the attacking returns before he comes off, obviously he's a, he's a good option. Uh, in terms of stats, four shots in the box at the weekend for Perez as well, so posting some good underlying statistics there as well. Nine penalty area touches in that game as well so yeah Perez Perez put up some good numbers at the weekend uh, he's only 7% owned so I know a lot of people are probably already tripled up on Leicester um, I've got Vardy and Tielemann so I'm, I'm probably unlikely to go for, for Perez um, but I think for anyone who doesn't have maybe you know Tielemans or Madison I think Perez should definitely be considered now as well Sergio Aguero picked up an injury. Looks like he's going to be out for a couple of weeks. And at this time of year, a couple of weeks can mean, you know, five or six game weeks in FPL. So I think that's good news for Gabriel Jesus. So I've added him to the watch list this week. 9.5 million. Now, the issue is a lot of us are probably pretty happy with our strike force. I've got Vardy, Jimenez and Abraham. Um... Other people will have, you know, Rashford. You know, there's not there's not much movement really required there with those those four. They're all delivering, um, so it's hard to fit Jesus in unless you want to lose somebody who's probably highly owned and who is having a very good season. But I think again, in terms of differentials, Jesus is only one point seven percent owned. I was having a look as well today, just on his season so far. Uh, in every game that he's played. 60 plus minutes he's got an attack and return at least one attack and return in all of those games so if Jesus is on the pitch if he starts he's going to get attack and returns so I do like him but again I'm probably not going to go for him myself because I'm happy with my strike force but I think anyone who's looking for a striker maybe if you've got a got a space for him uh, definitely you need to consider Jesus for the next couple of weeks he could be he could be the best differential of all over the next you know five six game weeks another player I've added to the watch list this week a nice cheap option for more than likely for our benches uh, this guy Brandon Williams Manchester United left back uh, he's got two 90 minutes under his belt now uh, got himself on the score sheet scored a great goal against Chef United which kick started our comeback now we don't know for sure if he's going to keep his place you know Ashley Young could come back in there um, don't really know what the injury situation is with Luke Shaw at the minute either but the signs are positive, you know, Williams has, has has played well, got himself a goal, so it's, it's going to be pretty hard for Solskjaer to drop him now. Um, I can't really imagine him nailing down the place for the, for the rest of the season, but hopefully he can for us in terms of FPL, because £4 million for a Manchester United defender is an absolute steal. 
Um, so that's he's someone I'm considering as well. If, if I look to downgrade, you know, I've got Tomori and I don't really use him because I'm in a 3-4-3. Three, three. I've got Trent Robertson and Lundstrom. So Tomori for me, he I could free up some cash there. At some point, you know, 4.6, 4.7, sell Tomori and get Williams just for for the bench, just to free up cash for, for, for other transfers. So that that's why Williams is on my watch list. He's just, he, he could be a really good enabler. Uh, and I think it's, you know, you can take a chance on him. He's only 4 million. Um, and, you know, you, you, again, he's not going to be someone you want to play every week. But I'll, I'll probably give it another week or two to see if he, if he can keep that spot for another one or two games. And then maybe I'll make a move. Players I've removed from the watch list this week. Uh, most of these are pretty, they're usually self-explanatory. It's it's probably because they've picked up suspensions or uh, injuries or the fixtures are, are turning for them. Um, so Josh King is gone because he's injured. Uh, Bournemouth strikers are not really scoring goals anyway. Wilson's gone, what, five or six games now without a goal. So no interest in the Bournemouth attack at the moment. Uh, Jan Matt is gone. He, I think he is injured. He didn't play at the weekend. So again, and, and it's not just the injury. Watford are, I think, what was it? They conceded three goals at home uh, against Burnley. So I, I want to stay away from Watford as well at the minute. Uh, Montoya from Brighton is gone from the watch list. Mainly uh, fixtures, a couple of tough fixtures coming up. Uh, Willems, the Newcastle left back, is gone as well. I watched Aston Villa Newcastle last night, and Newcastle were pretty poor defensively, so I'm not interested in any of their defenders either. Uh, and John McGinn, I've removed John McGinn from my watch list as well because I think Grealish is the best Aston Villa midfielder to go for now. Um, watching that game last night, you know everything goes through Grealish. He is the talisman there. Um, again, Villa fixtures are not great in the short term. I'm just getting them up here in front of me. Uh, they've got Man United, Chelsea and Leicester next. So, And then Sheffield United, which is a really tough game as well. But it's game week 18. When Liverpool have the blank game week, uh, Aston Villa have Southampton at home. And I think they've got Norwich after that as well. So I'm eyeing up a possible move for Grealish around game week 18. Um, so hopefully, you know, he's in great form. Uh I'm I'm hoping as well that he can possibly take control of penalties at Aston Villa. I know Wesley missed one uh, earlier in the season. I don't know if they've had one since, but I think as captain, surely Grealish has a good chance of of taking over penalty taking responsibilities there. So that would be another added bonus in his favour over John McGinn. McGinn was pretty quiet last night. He's been pretty quiet in a lot of games um, recently. He did he did have a few chances last night. You know, hit hit most of them straight at the keeper. Had one at the end of the game as well that he put wide, but you know I, I still think McGinn and Grealish are both good options. But if I had to choose one now, uh, it's Grealish. Uh, I think Grealish is one in for me at the minute. Moving on now to the Twitter questions. Thanks for everyone who sent them in as always. Uh, I've got six here. First one is from Nick Valance. Nick asks, "Do you buy into the Sterling performs better with Jesus on the pitch theory?" So yeah, I've seen a lot of people um, talking about this as, uh, in the last couple of days since the Aguero injury has has popped up. You know, looking back on the season when when Jesus has started, Sterling has performed very well. I think there's three games in particular. Uh, someone sent me a tweet earlier. I think it was game week one, game week seven, and maybe game week ten. I might have that third one wrong, but basically. I think Sterling scored 38 points over those three games. Definitely the first week of the season uh, when Sterling got his hat-trick. Jesus, I'm pretty sure, started that game. Do I buy into the theory? I don't really. Um, It's a very small sample size. And also, those fixtures, uh, I think it was Bournemouth, Everton and Aston Villa were those three games. So, you know, you'd expect Sterling to score well in those games no matter who's up front whether it be Aguero or Jesus so maybe there is something to it maybe maybe Sterling does prefer playing with Jesus and Jesus to me is a player he's quite different to Aguero you know he's much happier with his back to goal eh, and bringing others into play so maybe Jesus will be good for the likes of Sterling and the other Man City attackers as well so I can understand why people are you know people like me maybe were you know thinking of selling Sterling this week maybe are thinking twice about it now because Aguero's out. But for me, I don't think it's going to change my mind. I still think I'm going to follow through, get rid of Sterling and get um, get Manny. And that will leave me with De Bruyne as my only Man City cover. So I'm, I'm just kind of sick of Sterling, to be honest. He's just not doing enough for me, uh, given his price. I'm not going to captain him for the next couple of weeks either. So I'm happy to lose him. 
and you know I'll, I'll be wild carding probably game week 20 anyway so if it comes to it that i want him back then it'll be pretty easy for me to do so so yeah i don't buy into this theory too much um but again maybe there will be something to it maybe we will see an upturn in form from sterling you can probably guarantee it now actually because i'm going to sell him this week there was a related question here from Bock and Juniors as well about Sterling. He was just asking, you know, what do I think about Pep's comments? Um, do I think Sterling will play centre forward uh, during during the time Aguero was out? So Pep, I think Pep did come out and say that you know he's not too worried about Aguero being out because he has Jesus and Sterling. So he name checks Sterling as someone who can you know play the in the striker's role in in Aguero's absence as well, but. I do. I don't really see it happening, to be honest. I I fully expect Jesus just to play every game during this period. Um, you know, with Sterling on the wing as usual. You know, it, it could happen. Maybe one game. Maybe Jesus will will get a rest in one of them. But as far as I can see, I I fully expect to see Jesus up front uh, every time the Man City team sheet comes out. So I'm not. And even even if Sterling was to play up front, I don't even th- know. You know, is that a good thing? I don't know if it's a good thing. You know, Richarlison is a good example of that. People get over excited by players playing out of position, but. Richarlison to me is a better player when he's on the wing uh, as opposed to when he plays up front so I don't think it matters I don't think that these things matter too much I think we probably read into these things too much as as fantasy managers and we, we try to create a narrative for ourselves probably to convince ourselves of things that maybe there's not much there to it so for me um, I'm still I'm, I'm not too worried about losing Sterling this week question from Matthew Jones one of the best FPL managers out there Matthew asks, which Spurs assets should we be knee-jerking in? So yeah, a lot of questions about Spurs this week because they they played well for what, probably 60, 70 minutes of that, that game against West Ham and then let West Ham back into the game. So which which Spurs assets should we be jumping on? So I think th- there's a lot of options. Um, and I think the guys, was it Planet FPL podcast I was listening to this morning, um, were saying... Uh, you get what you pay for with 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 the Spurs players. Um, there's a lot of different price points. You know, Lucas is only seven. You've got Ali that is a little bit more, and then you've got uh, Son on the wing, and then obviously Kane's the most expensive of all. But I I, I like all four of them. Um, Son is obviously Son is is the best the best Spurs player. Uh, as you know, taking FPL away from it. Um, great performance, game week thirteen, goal and assist. Son, you can captain him as well, which you know makes him more attractive over the likes of maybe Ali and Mora. Um, Ali did have, especially the first half, I put a tweet out, it was the best 45 minutes I've seen from Deli Ali in a long time. So I think Mourinho will get Ali back to the levels we've seen a couple. For me, I'm still, as I said, I'm not getting overexcited because it was West Ham and, and how bad they were in, in that game. So... In terms of knee jerking, I think you can make an argument for going for any of those four. If you want to go early, Kane, Ali, Son, Lucas Mora, you know, it's probably slightly risky going with Lucas Mora because we're not 100% sure if he's going to start every week. Defensively, I'm not really interested yet. You know, they conceded two, you know, pretty soft goals. So it's probably going to take a bit of time for Mourinho to sort them out defensively. They're without their first choice goalkeeper. Um, I don't really rate the fullbacks too much defensively, Aurier and Ben Davis. Um, so, you know, Aurier is the most attractive of the defenders. I think he's only 4.8 million. So that's a crazy price for a, for a Jose Mourinho defender. Uh, and, you know, he, he got a great assist for Harry Kane as well, a great cross. So I think if I was going for a defender, if you wanted to go early on defenders, I think Aurier is probably the one to go for. But again, we can't be 100% sure yet if he's going to be a regular week in, week out. So I'm happy to wait on Spurs. I may, if I make an aggressive move this week and take a punt, it'll probably be Lucas Mora. I think, you know, Kane and Son are probably the safest bets to go for. Um, apart from that, I think it's, it probably is still a wait and see for me uh, with Spurs. Question from Didi. Ings, Danny Ings is injury prone, but he's in form and fixtures for the next few weeks are looking good for the Saints. Is he worth a punt? So I haven't really mentioned Danny Ings too much this season on on podcasts. He's not on my watch list simply because I drew up a list of players at the start of the season who I was going to completely avoid this year because they are made of glass. And Danny Ings is one of those players. There's no doubting he is. A, he's a great player. He's in great form, and Southampton have great fixtures. So you know, don't let me put you off getting him. 
this is just uh, a strategy I've wanted to to you know use this season. You know, because last season I got burned so many times by injured players. Ings, Arnautovic, uh, a couple of examples. Uh, Trent Alexander Arnold was another one. So I spent all of last season fighting fires, and I wasn't able to you know target the players I wanted to bring in because I was always trying to put out those fires. So this season I've found you know. I've been able to make the transfers I want to make because I haven't had any, you know, major injury issues or, or suspensions or anything like that. So that's why I'm avoiding Danny Ings, especially coming into this busy period. We've seen Hassan Hüttel before, um, you know, be very careful with Danny Ings when they play, you know, three games in a week. So, you know, m- my guess would be during this game week 14, 15, 16, I don't think Danny Ings will start all three. I would be very surprised if he did. Or even if he does, you're probably going to talk about 60, 70 minute appearances. You know that he's a, he's so important to them. You know if they're going to avoid relegation, they need Danny Ings to stay fit for the whole season. So if if there's one player they need to be very very careful with, it's Danny Ings, and that's enough for me to put to put me off him. Um, again, I don't think you can go wrong though. You know if you if you're happy enough to take the risk with with the the potential for injuries, he is very cheap. You know he's only what about six million, and again you know he could prov- he could prove to be excellent value over the next couple of weeks. So yeah, don't let me put you off him. But personally, it's uh I had my I had my struggles with Danny last season, so I'm not ready to go back there. Question from the Wrangler: Should we be concerned about Mount's minutes and Chelsea rotation over the festive fixtures? Yes. Well, I kind of briefly mentioned this at the start of the podcast. I am worried about Mason Mount. Um, they've got a great fixture home to West Ham this weekend. I would expect him to come back into the starting eleven, but I still have that doubt in my mind. I'm going to be sweating over the Chelsea team sheet this weekend because he didn't play last week. Um, There's no guarantee that he comes back in. You know, Lampard might just decide to stick with what he went with against Man City, so Mount might just have to be patient. Um, I think over the festive fixtures, he's he's a player I don't really want to own anymore because of that. Every week, I don't want to have to worry about the Chelsea team sheet and. That's kind of the reason I, I kind of I might not go for Pulisic either because I think it could be the same issue for him. Uh, I I don't expect Pulisic to start week in week out when there's games every three or four days. So I, I that's why I'm leaning towards you know teams that don't have Champions League players that I can rely on who are going to play every week like like uh, like Zaha Zaha is a prime prime example of that. So should we be concerned about Mount's minutes? Yes. Should we be concerned about Chelsea rotation? Yes. It, it's worrying me, so I think I'll end up just. I think I'll end up getting rid of Mount, if not this week, probably the following week, and just roll with Tamori and Abraham. So Abraham will start for me every week, and Tamori will be just probably be my be my first sub most weeks as well. So yeah, I'm I'm kind of leaning towards getting rid of Mason Mount possibly this week. Question from FPL Pumpkinhead, great name. There can't be too many. FPL Twitter handles left at this stage. Uh, Pumpkinhead asks, is TAA worth holding? So yeah, I mentioned the frustration with Liverpool clean sheets this season. Trent hasn't done an awful lot uh, in terms of attack and returns recently, but you know, just looking at his underlying numbers, every time I look at his his stats, I I don't even you know it, it never crosses my mind to sell him anyway. To be honest, I I I've always earmarked these you know five. Four or five fixtures in the run up to the blank game week eighteen as where the likes of the Liverpool assets should score well. So um trends go nowhere for me. I think you've got to hold them. If you've had them if you've held them this long, now is not the time to get rid of them before Brighton, Everton, Bournemouth and Watford. You know, that could easily be Trent could score forty points in those four games. It's it's not it's not out of the question for him to to put up numbers like that. More than likely he'll score eight points in those four games he'll, he, Liverpool will concede one goal in every game but hopefully not hopefully he can uh, start converting those numbers into attacking returns uh, and surely there's going to be some clean sheets there surely I'm hoping as someone who's had Trent and Robertson since game week one that my patience will be rewarded over the next four weeks hopefully three out of four at least clean sheets if not four out of four fingers crossed Um. You know, my season is going pretty well. I'm pretty happy to be, you know, about 230k uh, overall. You know, with wild card and all chips available. But you know, imagine if Liverpool just had, they've only got two clean sheets. Even if they had five or six clean sheets, my rank would be, you know, massively different. I'd probably be in the top 100k. 
um, if not, you know, even further. So yeah, it's it's been frustrating holding those two, but I think patience will be, surely patience will be rewarded with those two. Uh, last question is from Locky. Uh, he asks, "What goalkeepers are you considering to replace Pope?" So yeah, there was I talked about Pope at the start as well, and and how you know I was consider you know eyeing up a move away from him. Game week fifteen when they play Man City, Burnley play Man City, and I think they play Spurs after that. Then I was kind of eyeing that up as a possible you know route away from Pope to other goalkeepers who have been performing very well this season. Henderson at Sheffield United is probably top of my list, and then Matt Ryan is probably a close second. But I think those back to back nine pointers have. As I said, Pope's back in my good books now. You know, if he can get a clean sheet against Crystal Palace this weekend, I'm probably just going to keep the faith. You know, I did go into the season, you know, telling myself I was going to keep him for 38 game weeks. And I think I'm leaning towards doing that again now. I think I'll just stick it out, even during those tough fixtures. You know, hopefully he'll rack up save points, maybe a few bonus points or or a penalty save, possibly. Um, so, yeah, I think I'll end up keeping Pope. The only reason I'll sell him is... If I get to game week 15 and I've got two free transfers and I don't have any other issues, which is going to be probably unlikely. Um, so yeah, I think I'm just going to keep him. But I think I think moving away from him, anyone who, who you know is not feeling the love for him as much as I am, yeah, I think Henderson and, and Matt Ryan are probably the two best options. Right, time to look ahead to game week 14 now in terms of captaincy and my transfers. Captaincy, I put a poll on Twitter this morning. Last time I checked, there was about 5,000 votes. Uh, I put up three options for captaincy. There's, there's, I could have put up 10 options for captaincy this week. The, f- the way the fixtures are falling, there's, there's so many good matchups this weekend. Uh, I think there's going to be a, a big spread of captains again again this week. There's a lot of there's, a, there's opportunity this week to go for, for a differential as well in terms of captaincy if you've got maybe Spurs assets. Even Manchester United assets, you know, Arsenal play Norwich. So yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a very interesting week for for captaincy this week. The three options I, I included in the poll because I think they're the three best options are were Vardy, Manny, and Tammy Abraham. And then I've just put a fourth option as other for for people to to click that one. So as I said, about five thousand votes. Vardy came out on top, just about over Manny. Uh, Vardy thirty nine percent. Manny 37% and Tammy Abraham was on 16%. Now, as I said, I think I'm going to stick with Vardy because I'm, I am I always tend to be pretty loyal to players who do well for me. Vardy's got me 48 points over the last two game weeks. He plays Leicester at home this weekend. As long as Marco Silva is still there, I think I will leave my leave my armband on Vardy and hopefully he can, he can put uh, another 12-pointer on the board to make it three in a row. Uh, I'm going to bring in Manny for Sterling, I think. So that, I think Manny will be my, my vice captain for that Brighton fixture. I think Manny's a really good captaincy shout this weekend as well. As is Abraham, simply because he's going to be up against Roberto uh, in the West Ham goal, who is possibly the worst goalkeeper I've ever seen in the Premier League. Um, the only issue, I, the thing I don't like about Abraham for captaincy is his minutes. The last two games, he's 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 been taken off after 72 minutes. I think four games back he managed sixty nine minutes. So, you know, you want your captain to play ninety minutes because you know very often you know uh, goals come late in games when when defences tire uh, and you want Tammy on the pitch for those last twenty minutes and he hasn't been for the last two game weeks. So I think that makes Vardy and Manny better better options because they will get ninety minutes. Um, other options I mentioned Spurs are at home to Bournemouth. I think Son and Kane if you own those guys good options. Sterling is away to Newcastle. I'm going to sell him, so he's probably going to get a hat trick in that game. Norwich, uh, Arsenal are away to Norwich. Lacazette, Aubameyang have to be considered. Uh, Manchester United are at home to Aston Villa, so the likes of Martial and Rashford. Again, so many captaincy options this week. Uh, I can't remember. I can't remember a game week like this for a long time where there's so many, so many games that are just you know expected to go one way. So potentially a very high scoring game week, but with FPL you can, you can never guarantee that. Moving on to my potential transfers now. So I've got two frees. Uh, most likely, now take this with a pinch of salt after I said last week I was 90% sure of doing uh, staring to Manny. But most likely this week, you know, before any Champions League games get played, um, staring to Manny, 
and roll the second transfer is probably my initial thought. But I am quite tempted by a few other things. Um, you know, Mason Mount out is is a high. There's a high possibility of me doing that this week. I mentioned you know Zaha possibly Lucas Mora. I think I've got exactly enough in the cash to do Sterling to Manny and Mount to Zaha. So any price changes, I'll be priced out of that. If I wanted to get Lucas Mora, it would probably be a minus four. So probably would mean downgrading to Mori for someone like Williams. Or I think I've got probably would have about 4.3 million to spend on a defender there for the bench. Um, Pulisic, I haven't ruled it out, but I'm not really feeling it. I don't really like the Mount to Pulisic transfer as much as other people do, just for those rotation worries. Uh, and Triori, you know, I've mentioned Triori a couple of times the last couple of weeks. I still like him as well. Haven't ruled out just doing Mount to Triori because again, Triori should play most games during this busy period. Even though they've they've got Europa League games, Triori has been getting ninety minutes most games. I like him a lot more now as well because he's taken his hair out of his braids and he he looks he's an even cooler dude than he was before now. Um, another nice assist for Jimenez uh, at the weekend. So yeah, I really like Triori as well. Uh, I mentioned I like him for gaming eighteen, so that would be a bit of preparation for that as well. Um, overall, I'm very happy with. Well, I wouldn't say I'm very happy. I'm happy with Pope. I'm very happy with my defenders. You know, uh, those two Liverpool guys and Lundstrom, and I'm very happy with my my three strikers as well. So, any moves I make this week, it's going to be midfield. Uh, it's going to be Sterling out for Manny most likely, and and Mount could go as well. But if I don't sell Mount, I'll just I'll just bank the second free transfer. So again, I just need to wait and see how Champions League goes. Uh, first of all, uh, make sure there's no injuries or anything like that before I make my decisions. I think that's everything covered for this week. If you enjoyed the podcast, as always, give it a give it a review, give it a retweet, a share, all that good stuff. If you want to hear more from me, I'll be doing two podcasts on my Patreon this week. I'll be doing an eye test podcast on Wednesday. I'll be doing a Friday podcast with my final decisions after the press conferences on Friday evening. Um, I've set up a December a December competition for patrons as well. There's going to be a £100 Amazon gift voucher for the manager who scores the most points in my Patreon Money League, just to spice things up in December. Um, all, all that content, all that Patreon content, you can get access to it for just $3 a month. So any questions you have, just send me a, a message on Twitter about that. Enjoy the Champions League. Good luck in Game Week 14. Thank you for listening, as always. I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do next week in terms of podcast because we've got midweek fixtures. There's games Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So I think most likely what I'll do is instead of releasing the podcast on Tuesday next week, I think I'll rec- I'll, I'll try and record one on Monday morning and just get it out a day earlier. Um, so you'll have Monday, Tuesday to listen to it before the, the Tuesday evening deadline. Uh, I'm not sure then later in the week because, I mean, the, the deadline, the, the game week ends Thursday night, then it's only Friday, really. Um, so I'm not sure if I'll do one on the Friday, but again, I'll I'll keep you updated on the, on the Twitter uh, about that. Um, but yeah, pretty sure I'll get one out next Monday morning after game week 14. So enjoy the rest of your week. Enjoy game week 14. Hopefully it's a good one, and I'll talk to you all next week. <laughs>